Good morning, everybody. So I'm uh, Damien Coquille uh, from a, a French IT security company. I'm going to present you uh, a new tool to handle uh, some uh, specific chips from NXP. So first of all, I'm the head of uh, R&D at Econocom Digital Security, uh, which is a, a French IT security company. And we created the first IoT cert so basically, we are working on a lot of devices, connected devices, and uh, also industrial devices. And this is uh, where this, com this talk comes from. Uh, I'm also a senior security researcher and also a hardware hacker, or at least pretending to be one. But, uh, you know, I don't know everything. So what are we going to talk about? So we're going to talk about firmware extraction 101. I don't know if you are familiar with the this uh, firmware extraction process we are used to, to do when uh, it comes to analyzing uh, embedded devices. But in fact, I'm going to, to go through the, this process and uh, we're gonna see that uh, sometimes it may fail and it requires uh, a, lot more, a, lot, a lot more work to, 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 to find a, a solution for some issues we, we can meet. So we then uh, are going to, to go through the IMX architecture, and uh, especially its memory layout, uh, which is uh, very interesting here. And uh, I, will go in, uh, I will then present my tool, my new tool, IMX NAND tools. So it's uh, more than, uh, than a tool, just a set of tools that will uh, ease the work uh, on uh, IMX uh, non-flash dumps. And we will conclude with some best practices uh, for IMX systems designer. So first of all, the firmware extraction process. When, when you are doing some kind of uh, analysis of a specific device, you need to know what a device uh, does. So this device can contain a lot of uh, data, so, such as file systems, applications, binary files. So sometimes it's uh, just uh, some kind of uh, sing a single program that runs on the, on the system. So, this is something we want to extract from a device because uh, by doing this, we can be able to understand how this device works and what data does this device manipulate. So this is a very interesting. And also, in this, uh, in this data, we expect to find some uh, very interesting stuff, such as encryption keys, decryption keys, certificates, passwords, and sometimes also uh, intellectual property, you know, so some specific algorithm implemented in the device. So this is something very useful when you are uh, analyzing this, uh, say, your device. So you need to understand everything about a device. You need to, to determine on how this device has been created, has been designed. Uh, you need to understand also how it works. And this is very specific here because, you know, uh, vendors, Print on to know that uh, they but not to know how the devices work, but in fact they do not because there is a gap between the vision of uh, our device work from a, a designer perspective and the way the device really works. Uh, you know there are in between some developers that sometimes do mistakes, and these mistakes you know, introduce some vulnerabilities in many devices. So they might think that a device works a specific way, but in fact it can work uh, differently. So this is why we are going to analyze this device, and, uh, and this is uh, why we are trying to determine how a device works. And also, we need to know what data is stored where. Where is stored what data? We need to know how, where, where do, where do, but, sorry, where you can find the interesting data. So the first method you can use is to buy a small clip for your chip that contains all the memory, which is basically some non-flash chip. And by using this uh, clip, you can just plug it on the chip and use uh, some kind of adapter to extract the content of the memory. So this, way, this uh, method may work, but sometimes it may not, because uh, you know, once you pour the non-flash chip, then the whole system will going to start and interact with this chip. So this is a, sometimes a problem because since you are going to interact with this chip, you won't get the correct data since another another device or component is uh, actually interacting with it also. So 
This is one method to do it, but we prefer the second one, which is a cheap off. We are going to remove the flash memory component from a PCB by uh, using some uh, some tools. So here I'm going to remove this uh, this flash chip with the hot air rework station. So this is the big stuff I'm using, I'm using here, and uh, so it takes uh, yeah so sometimes it's a few minutes to to get it. Uh, uh, removed from the PCB. So you have to be careful when you are doing this because uh, you can uh, burn the chip. You can f uh, fry the chip if you set the temperature of this uh, hot air rework station too high. So it's, uh, it needs uh, some kind of practice to, to be able to extract this one. So this one was a bit uh, difficult to extract and yeah, here it is. So here I removed this chip and then it's ready to be dumped. So, in order, to, in order to extract data from this flash memory, you need some specific stuff. And this stuff is a professional flash programmer. So this is a specific device. There are many of them. I put uh, two of them on the sides, uh, on the left, hand, left uh, side of this slide. You got a Dataman, which is a very professional uh, flash memory reader. And an eraser and programmer. And on the right side of the side, of the side, you got the TNM 5000. So this is a Chinese version of, uh, of the, the first one. And it works very well. But in fact, it only works with, uh, on Windows with uh, some specific drivers you need to install. And it's uh, quite a challenge to get it working on Windows. But once it works, that's okay. You can use it. And it comes with uh, a lot of adapters. Uh, these uh, tiny green boards you can see here with uh, a lot of uh, uh, various sockets to put the memories uh, in them. So I'm going to plug this uh, tiny flash, non-flash memory inside the, uh, this socket. So uh, the remember, be very careful when you are doing this because you need to, to be sure that pin one on the flash chip is connected to the pin one on this uh, adapter. If you don't do this, you are going to fry the memory and uh, everything is gone. So again, take some time to, to do it. So once you got your adapter socket uh, ready with the flash chip in it, then you can plug it in the ZIF socket. So ZIF is zero insertion force. So this is a, a very nice socket. You can just, uh, 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 you can, uh, <laughs> you might have the, the lever and then you can plug the, this adapter and uh, use the programmer with it. And uh, last but not least, we are going to use this uh, programmer to extract the firmware. So it, it takes some time. Here, um, I, I think the video is, uh, uh, has been uh, modified to, to go uh, faster than, uh, than it actually does. It, take, it took me maybe 10 minutes to extract the content of, the, of this flash memory, one gigabyte flash memory. So this is something very, you know, um, we are very, uh, we are used to it. We, we know how to do it. We do it very, 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 very commonly. So this is a when on process and it, it's also documented. If you have a look at the dump you got from this, uh, this uh, programmer, then you will see that this dump uh, is not a one gigabyte dump since uh, your flash chip um, is supposed to to contain one gigabyte, one gigabyte di data, then you will see that it's a 1.1 gigabyte data stored in it. So why, why do we have uh, more memory than expected? The reason is that these non-flash chips uh, are storing data a very specific way. So we are going to talk about pages, bytes, and what we are used to call OB for out-of-band data. Uh, in a non-flash chip, bytes are stored in pages. Um, if you want to modify a byte in a flash chip, you, you cannot modify just one byte. You need to read a page, modify the byte in, the, in this page, and then write again this page. So this page has a given size. This is described in the documentation, the data sheet of this, uh, this uh, chip. And uh, this is uh, quite, uh, quite useful, but also, these non-flash chips are very prone to errors. They are not 100% reliable. So what does the manufacturer do? Uh, they put some extra space in them to allow some, uh, some more data to be stored. And basically, this, this uh, uh, extra space is used to store some ECC bytes. So ECC bytes, so ECC stands for error correction codes. 
This is, these are some, uh, these are specific data, uh, computed with uh, some algorithm that allows, um, many, a driver or a controller to detect errors in uh, the readings and then fix these errors. If you have a look uh, more specifically at the layout of this uh, non-flash, so you, you will find two, um, two different layout, main layout used by uh, non-flash um, drivers or controllers. So the first one on the left um, puts an extra space after each page. So you get a, a, a page of data, then some bytes of uh, OB data, then another page, another OB data, and so on. And there is another layout where uh, all the OB data is stored in one page, for instance, or may maybe multiple pages, depending on the flash, si flash chip size. So if you have a look at the data sheet, you will find that uh, all of this information in the data sheet, such as the page size, which is uh, here 4,320 bytes, Composed of two series of bytes, one of 4,096 uh, bytes, which is basically the data size stored in one page, and the uh, 224 bytes, which is the OB data. So here we have, we have uh, a very nice clue about the, the layout used to store the data in the flash chip. So this is very common. So we create some script in Python to remove this uh, out of band data. So what we are going to do, just uh, uh, load in memory the whole content of, this, of the file. Then we are going to remove for, for each page this OB data and concatenate the results. And then we got a, a cool uh, flash memory dump. Without the OB data, then we can process it with some tools. So here it is. And then we are going to check if this, uh, if this uh, dump is, uh, is okay. So let's use Beanwalk. Beanwalk is a very standard tool, very well-known tool to handle this, uh, this flash. And then it finds a lot of uh, file systems in it. Uh, four SquashFS file systems and two GFFS2 file systems. So that's cool. Uh, yeah, that's good if my clicker works. So I think it's uh, out of battery. <laughs> So, um, there are many file systems that can be used to store data on this flash, and we go very, very quickly through this, uh, this file system. So, you can find some SquashFS file systems, uh, UFFS2, yet another file, FlashFS file systems, uh, GFFS2 also, a journalist flash, flash file system version 2, uh, with one partition per image, and also, uh, a more recent file system, or more recent system of, uh, uh, data storing, which is UBI for unsorted block image, and we go uh, further with this. So basically, at this moment, we extracted the uh, flash memory flash memory chip. We dumped all the contents of this. We ran binwalk, and we got everything we need. So next step is to try to extract information, files, uh, configuration, and so on from the flash chip from from this dump. Sorry. So. This process is, as I said, is very well documented. And recently, Pentest Partners published a blog entry uh, on this uh, on this um, this process. So everything is uh, a bit more detailed than that, uh, than that uh, what I presented here. So if you want to have more information about this process and go further uh, or try it by yourself, go to this uh, blog post. This is very very detailed and complete. So. We know how to do this. I mean, yeah, that's okay. This, uh, this is well known. But at, at this specific time, a customer asked us to help him with uh, some kind of uh, system he, he had, and he was stuck. This system is an IMX6 platform. So what, what is this uh, IMX6 platform? It's uh, something uh, created by Freescale, uh, and this, uh, this system is very particular. And, uh, well, we, we told our client, uh, our customer that, yeah, we can do it. We know how to do it. Yeah, this is something we, uh, we usually, we, we are used to it, to do, sorry. Uh, yeah, give us, uh, the, this platform. We are going to, to, to extract the chip and get all the data you want from this. Because, uh, yeah, the, this customer was not able to, to do so. So, yeah, we go through it. We dump uh, the flash, extracted the flash, the, uh, the exact same thing uh, uh, as I showed you. Uh, and at, uh, at, the, at the end, we run Beanwalk on this firmware. And yeah, we got a lot of flash systems. That's right. That's cool. But the fact is that when we 
extract the UBI um, partition, so which is a uh, all, the, all the file system on it, then we faced a, an issue. This UBI uh, file system didn't work. We weren't able to get uh, the the files the, or the file systems contained in this uh, UBI volume. So this was a problem. So here it is. Uh, I used some uh, specific tools, UBI reader, to extract all the data, and then it simply failed. We were not able to get this uh, this data, and it was uh, very puzzling, you know, because normally this is a straightforward process. So we had to look at the at the the X file because yeah we got some some kind of stack, and in in the X file we uh, had a, a specific look at uh, zero pages. Zero pages are uh, in flash memories uh, mainly some pages full of zeros, and this is very interesting because if you have some if you expect some oddities in the file, then these zero pages or FF pages this is quite the same might have some errors in it. And in this dump, we found that uh, for at a very specific position in uh, almost each pages, we found a, a weird byte. And we didn't, know, we didn't know what this byte is for. We didn't know if, uh, if we think was, uh, was normal. Then we had a look at the UBI uh, partition we found. And this partition doesn't start at a very uh, at a uh, at a, the expected offset we got a one byte offset from the ubi signature so this is also something uncommon with uh, this uh, this dump so this is a uh, some kind of crafty byte we got and also we can see on the bin walk output that the uh, address uh, the offset of the ubi data is uh, 21c one which is not common. Most of the times we get a, a, a multiple of the page size offset. So this is not a line on the page size at this time. So that's where we did a quick investigation and this quick investigation we made anomalies on the system. Our dump seems okay. This is a uh, correct. We get the, the, the correct size and, uh, we didn't do, uh, some, we, we didn't do anything wrong, you know, when we, when we extracted the dump. So this may be related to the IMX platform. Maybe, why not, a custom uh, storage mechanism? So let's have a look at this platform. Uh, this IMX platform uh, is uh, dedicated to industrial applications. So this is uh, uh, the integrated multimedia application processor and the family of processors. I, uh, you can find IMX 28, IMX 5, 7, 6, 8. And this is very popular in automotive and home automation industries. So you can expect this platform uh, on a lot of devices, such as one, uh, the ones that are in uh, ECUs, uh, in cars, for instance, or maybe in, auto in uh, home automation devices. And this uh, platform provides a lot of features, including uh, uh, an encrypted RAM, uh, SATA 2 support, secure boot, and so on. So this is very convenient for people who want to create uh, uh, an industrial system to to use this uh, this platform. So it's based on the ARM Cortex A9 control CPU for this uh, IMX28. So this uh, image is extracted from the uh, reference manual available on the internet. So I, I didn't do anything that uh, other than just browse the internet and find the reference manual to to get the information. This system can boot on various storage devices such as NAND flash. SD cards, parallel not flash, USB, uh, MMC, and also hard, hard, disk, um, hard drives. So this uh, boot process is handled by a, a specific boot room inside the uh, IMX system. And this boot room starts the whole system. If you tell the system to boot on the non-flash, then it's going to, to load the non-flash and boot the system. So that's it. This is not very complicated at this time. But we spotted something very unusual, the general purpose multimedia interface, uh, also called JPMI. So this JPMI component controls how data is read and stored on non-flash chips. And this is what the, this is at, at, uh, at this time that is, is a, that becomes a, uh, everything becomes interesting because it supports also multiple non-flash chips. You can put multiple chips, map them on multiple partitions and load it on the systems. This GPMI component also uses BCH, which is a, a, a neural control and correction mechanism 
to avoid errors on uh, reading and writing. In the same reference manual, there is a, a little image of what uh, the flash memory looks like. On the top, this is a common layout used in non-flash memories. So this is very, very common. You got the two kilobyte main area, which is uh, the pay, the, what is expected to be the data, the data. And then at the end, the, uh, OOB data. So this is uh, the extra space, uh, put by, uh, by the manufacturers, uh, along with the uh, every pages. So on the bottom, you get the, uh, the layout used by this GPMI component, and it is totally different. So how does it work? Your data is split in 512 byte chunks. Then ECC bits are added, are appended to this, uh, this data. So this uh, ECC data is uh, stored as bits. This is not aligned with bytes. So this, uh, this uh, has a, a very specific consequence that it will shift all your data with maybe two, three, four, five bits. And you have to reconstruct the old stuff when, <laughs> if you want to, to deconstruct the, this specific layout. So ECC bits are added, then chunks are grouped and stored in a page, preceded by one metadata block. The size of this metadata block can vary. Um, this, it, it depends. And a bad block marker byte is swapped with the first metadata byte, sorry. If you have a look at this, uh, at this, uh, at this image, there is a swap byte. The first, um, the first byte is in fact one byte taken from the last block and put in a, a at the, the offset zero and is replaced with one byte from the metadata. And this is uh, very interesting because it can explain something, some anomalies we found. Remember the weird byte we found in the, the data page? This can be explained by this byte swapping stuff for bad markers, bad block markers. So th this is a, a byte that is normally uh, from the metadata byte, but this byte has been swapped because of the storage mechanism used here. All of this information, all of this structure, and uh, all the sizes are defined in a firmware configuration block, also called FCB. This st structure contains all the required information about uh, how that is stored. Now, this structure must be present in the first megabyte of your non-flash. And the second field of this structure contains the ASCII text FCB, so if we look at our dump, we find this uh, FCB signature at the very start of the, at the very beginning of the, the flash dump we made. So this makes sense. We got this structure. So let's have a look at this structure. If we, um, if we look in the documentation, in the data sheets, and also in some codes we find on, on GitHub, this structure contains the non-space data size and also the OOB data size. So this is quite interesting. But uh, furthermore, there is also some block zero and block n specifications, such as the block zero size and the block n size. They uh, made some distinction between block zero and the, the remaining blocks in the stored in the page. But in fact, it's uh, quite al uh, always the same. And also, we can find the number of bytes stored in the metadata block. So if you want to, 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 to determine how, uh, how many bytes are used to store the metadata information at the start of the page, then you can get this information from the FCB. So this is a critical structure we need to find and parse in order to know exactly how data is stored in this non-flash. If we have a look at this structure in our dump, uh, the offset 3C, we find uh, the number of bytes of metadata block, and this number of bytes is one, one byte of metadata, metadata, blah, 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 blah. <sighs> I'm going to, yeah, do it. Uh, one byte of metadata block. So, if we, again, have a look at this uh, flash that we made, then this can explain the offset we saw in the UBI image, because this byte here, which is uh, full of zero, uh, which is zero, uh, is uh, obviously this metadata byte. But remember, this byte has been swapped with uh, some bytes in our zero page. So this is full of zero then. And so this means that the zero value we got here uh, is uh, the zero value, zero byte, we may expect to find in the last block. 
And if you have a look at the word byte uh, that is stored uh, uh, for, um, uh, further in memory, then you will find that this byte is FF. And so in the documentation, it's expected to be, to, to be FF in the metadata. So it makes sense. There is also a uh, DBT, which is the discovered bad block table. So uh, GP, the GPMI components implement some kind of bad block management system. It implements uh, its own way of um, managing these bad blocks. And uh, this is done, uh, again, with some specific structures. And these structures specified the, uh, specified the number of bad blocks and the impact, number of impacted pages by these bad blocks. So basically, what the uh, GPMI does here is just uh, um, read this DBBT information. This is a list of bad blocks. And then uh, remove the bad blocks or don't take care of these bad blocks when dealing with the, the non-flash. Uh, going to, to, to read or, or write. Um, when it comes to the ECC, again, this is an image extracted from the reference manual of IMX28. Uh, you have a, a very a nice overview of the storage in uh, one page. So the first part is here, uh, the M is uh, for metadata, and then we got all the blocks. Block zero with uh, uh, its uh, specific size. ECCB zero, so this is the ECC data for the ECC bits for the corresponding block, block zero, and then with block one, block two, block three, and so on. So this ECC is very interesting because, uh, you know, uh, as I said uh, earlier, the, the non-flash systems or non-flash chips are prone to error. So when, you are, when we are going to read and extract information from these chips, we may have some bits flipped, and this can cause uh, issues when you, uh, you are, when you will try to, to to extract file system from this uh, this firmware. So if uh, it would be cool to be able to fix these errors and uh, use this ECC bits to extract correctly data from this chip. So. It, uh, this ECC is based on a BCH, which is, uh, which stands for Bose, Ray, Chowdhury, and Okugan error correcting code. So this is, uh, widely documented. It's also implemented in Python. So if you want to, to use it with a Python script, then you can use a, a co the corresponding library. So this is, uh, very, very common, very standard. But the fact is that the data from each block may be shifted from a certain of number of bytes, of bits, sorry. So this is, uh, the main issue here. You have to, um, to reconstruct, uh, every block um, by taking care of this bit shifting. And it takes a lot of time to, to do so. Uh, in the, the tool I wrote, this is a, uh, the, the part of the code that is more, the less performant, you know, because it, uh, it takes some time to, to shift everything and, uh, and reconstruct this, uh, this system. So this uh, bit shifting uh, is taken into account by the GPMI component itself uh, from a hardware perspective. So this is very, very quick and very efficient in uh, uh, the IMX uh, architecture. But in fact, it may uh, come some uh, some issues if we are if we want to to extract this uh, this data from uh, from the system. So, what's next? Yeah. So what's next? We're going to take our flash dump and then try to recover all the data from this dump, knowing all of this. We know actually at this time we know how this data how data is stored in this device or in this non-flash. We know how to handle all of, all of the data stored in our flash dump. So let's go. Oh, we are going to, to recover and we map all the bytes. So first, we need to find the FCB structure at the beginning of the flash dump. So this is quite easy. Once you get the FCB structure, you can parse it and recover every critical parameters, such as the block size, ECCB block size, number of bits of, the, of ECCB. You can also get the number of bytes of uh, the metadata and so on. So once you get all this information from the MCB, FCB, then you know exactly how the data is stored in this non-flash chip. Then we remove every metadata and ECC bit according to this FCB. So we are going to, to remove all the ECC bit information. We are going to remove the metadata as well. The idea behind this is to reconstruct um, a basic page from the uh, IMX version of it. And of course, we are going to use this uh, ECC bit 
to fix errors in the dump we made. So if uh, our programmer may get some weird data or some bits flip in the page, we can fix them and then uh, have a, a more reliable dump that we are going to, to work with. So at the top here, you got the uh, IM, IMX memory layout. And what we are going to do is this, we are going to recover every piece of data stored in the in various blocks. And we are going, we are also taking care of the swap byte, uh, which uh, is uh, written in the, at the very beginning of the page and put, uh, put this byte back in the correct block. And we are going to do this for every pages in our dump. So if you want to do this manually, this uh, may take a lot of time. So this is why we're going to, to create a tool. So we developed a specific set of tools. Uh, called the IMX NAN tools. So this is, uh, this tool has been published on uh, PyPy and uh, also on GitHub. So if you want to, to have a look at the, at this tool, uh, the source code and, uh, and so on, uh, feel free to do it. Um, actually it's written in Python and only in Python. We are thinking about, uh, a native version, uh, maybe a C version of this tool because as, uh, like I said, it takes a lot of time to process uh, all this uh, bit shifting. So expect, uh, for, for, um, in order to give you an idea of the time uh, you need to, to process a, a dump, this uh, one gigabyte dump, it takes uh, about 10 minutes to process and to recover the um, memory, the original memory layout. So um, this, uh, this is uh, not very efficient, but uh, it does the job. So here we are going to extract information from this uh, FCB. So we are going to use uh, IMX non-info. Non -info. This uh, tool extracts the FC contents of the FCB and displays uh, every field. So you can see the number of bytes uh, in, in each pages. You can see also the size of the out of band data. You can get also the sizes of uh, the various blocks the type of uh, BCH uh, of uh, ECC used, there are multiple versions of it. You can set up uh, uh, different parameters for the uh, BCH algorithm that will use more or less byte, uh, bits, sorry, for the ECC. So it depends, um, and we got everything we need to, to extract it. And at the uh, bottom of, the, of this output, you may see that there is uh, two firmwares, firmware number one and firmware number two. These firmwares are uh, dedicated to boot, uh, to the booting process. Um, if you set up the system to boot on uh, on a non flash, you can set up set it up to boot on the first one, uh, first firmware or second firmware. So this is a uh, some kind of executable code that the IMX uh, processor is able to run. So this is not where you are ex expecting to find the data or every partition. So you can extract it with the following tool, but uh, it gives you just a, a binary data you need to to analyze. So again. Uh, it takes 10 minutes to process a one gigabyte uh, file. So I, I sped up uh, the video a bit just to, to show you the, this process. But in fact, uh, this is uh, actually working. Uh, I also specified the dash C option to enable um, ECC co correction. So it uses the ECC bits to fix uh, all the blocks. And uh, we are able to get a very reliable page or, or flash dump here with this uh, this uh, this tool. So this is the IMX non-convert. So this is the second tool of uh, this tool set that can be used to convert an image. So once we converted this image, we, we can again use Binwalk to try to find out to extract the uh, file systems that are stored in it. So if you look carefully, you will see that uh, now the UBI offset is aligned on the page size. So we 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 can process it very easily. So I'm going to extract the UBI volume by using DD. So this is uh, some uh, some uh, command line voodoo, very very easy to to do. And then you, I'm going to use UBI reader to extract all the files, all the file systems, and then on the files. So here it is. Yeah, we got everything. No errors this time. Everything works fine. And I'm going to extract all the images. Again, no errors, so that's pretty cool. And here they are. 
we got we managed to extract all the images from the UBI uh, UBI content container without any problem. So this is great. And then we are going to extract all the files. So if you are familiar with UBI system, uh, just to give you an overview, what is uh, what is this system? It stores data in volume. So we have to do it in two steps. You first extract the images of each partitions, and then you extract files from each partition. These partitions may uh, use some uh, well-known file systems such as uh, SquashFS or, <coughs> or other file systems. But uh, UBI also came, uh, comes with uh, um, its own file system called the UBIFS. And most of the time it's, uh, it's this file system that is used to store data. So again, we are going to, to use UBI Reader to extract all of this information. So uh, as I mentioned earlier, this, uh, this tool is quite, uh, it's pretty cool. It's written in Python again, so uh, it's, uh, the source code is available on GitHub. You can uh, use it to do a lot of stuff with this UBI system. And then by using this tool, we can extract from each image all the files, all the files uh, from each image, all five systems, we can get back the data and continue to analyze this, this device. So this is uh, something uh, quite unusual here, but uh, we managed to, to handle this. So that's well, quite a win. So some uh, remarks about this uh, IMX system. So this IMX system, um, every reference manual can be found on uh, on the internet, uh, either published by NXP itself or Freescale, or by a lot of developers uh, that uh, own some personal websites and publish on their website this uh, this uh, reference manuals. Uh, these manuals are a thousand pages long, and they, they, you need to to, to go uh, through these uh, manuals to get all the valuable information. But in fact, this is open source. The, this is open source information you can gather from the internet. So there is no uh, hidden, uh, hidden information from NXP or Freescale. Also, a lot of publicly uh, available, uh, a lot of code is av available in GitHub, and if you crawl many GitHub repositories, you can find a lot of mentions of the FCB structure and also the MTD driver. If you go uh, on GitHub in the uh, Linux kernel source code, you can find some drivers handling this GPMI component uh, uh, GPMI system. So in this source code, you can find everything you need, such as the F details of this uh, FCB structure and also the way the ECC works. So this is quite a... Uh, this is not very obscure, you know. You need to to gather every piece of information and put it put it together to to understand how it works. But in fact, uh, anybody can do it. Um, so this is the an, an extract of the IMX Knobs uh, Knobs uh, GitHub repository, which is uh, managed by NXP. So this is a, a legitimate uh, repository, and in this repository, we can find the FCB block definition. So this is uh, quite straightforward to, to get this information. The fact is that you need to search, to, to look for it to get this, in, this info. Again, some uh, extract, code extract from uh, GitHub. From this time, the U-Boot uh, source code. And U-Boot uh, contains some uh, specific code for IMX system, IMX28 uh, especially. So this is IMX28 non-gate ECC strength. And this is the formula uh, to compute the size of uh, your ECC bits, ECC block, uh, depending on the uh, page data size and page OB size, so the, the specification of your non-flash. So this is quite interesting because uh, you, you can expect uh, um, a non-flash to have this uh, this number of bits of ECC depending on these uh, settings you can get from the datasheet itself. So the main concern here that is that this IMX systems allows data encryption. You can use uh, on-the-fly encryption for your non-flash or even your SD card or EMMCs, which are diff different ways to store data on an IMX system. But this system supports this uh, non-flash encryption feature. So this is possible to use uh, this uh, encryption. But guess what? Most of the systems we analyzed, we tested on this, didn't use this feature because, you know, it's more convenient for for vendors and manufacturers to not to use this uh, encryption process. So this is uh, something uh, yeah, uh, common in uh, the uh, embedded device industry. Uh, 
I can say. It's a it's difficult to, to set up for some people, it's difficult to set up this encryption mechanism, so they don't use it. And uh, there are also some uh, non variants of this uh, this uh, GPMI uh, component because uh, we found a various some repositories on GitHub with different versions of this uh, of this GPMI component, and most of the time, uh, this, var this various or different version of this uh, GPMI driver depends on the boot room uh, put in the uh, IMX system. Remember, I told you at the beginning of the talk that there, there is a, a specific boot room embedded in the in the IMX uh, processor. So this is uh, something uh, that has. Uh, evolves over time, and uh, they are uh, they also made uh, changes to this uh, FCB structure and other structures as well. So you you may uh, expect some uh, some issues. So this the current version of IMX non tools worked for all of our dumps, but um, maybe it was for the late uh, latest version of this uh, bridge room. We didn't have the opportunity to test it on various uh, version of this uh, bridge room, and especially older versions. So the only way to to know is uh, to install, test, and contribute with uh, to this uh, to this tool. So we are open to pull request on GitHub, and if you want to to test it, if you find uh, some uh, bugs uh, in this tool, feel free to to, to collaborate and uh, to 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 file a pull request. So as a conclusion, IMX systems use a custom non-flash layout. Undocumented till now. This layout is documented in various documents and publicly available codes. There is no ex um, very specific explanation, a very detailed explanation of how this uh, layout works, but all of this information is split uh, around uh, various documents. So this, uh, this explains why it's not documented. IMX non tools, so this is a tool we, uh, we develop, provide a set of tools to handle this layout and uh, convert dumps into usable images. So the, that is a way to, 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 have a, to solve this, uh, this issue. And of course, IMX systems should use non flash encryption feature to avoid key passwords or IP leaks uh, from them. So just to conclude, I, I got a call from the product security uh, incident response team manager. Uh, a few a few days ago, uh, and uh, th this guy explained to me that uh, they are expecting some uh, storm for their customers so coming from their customers. You know, a lot of customers use the, of uh, NXP use this uh, IMX system, and they, at least for the uh, recent years, they were expecting some kind of security because nobody was able to extract the data from the non-flash chips because of this custom uh, layout they are using. But in fact, they are going to, I hope, discover that this uh, custom layout is uh, no longer undocumented and maybe it will make the, you know, this customer move forward in terms of security and maybe use uh, this encryption mechanism. So, who knows? But in fact, this is uh, very common to not to use encryption in uh, various uh, devices we, we tested. So, thank you for attending. If you have uh, any question, uh, no, nobody? Yeah? Uh, uh, so if I don't understand well, um, you monitor the CPU and you saw that it uh, reads one kilobyte plus uh, 13 bytes. Uh, on a page, when where the data sheet uh, stated that it's uh, a four kilobyte page. Four kilobyte. 
yeah, 224, for instance, yeah. Uh, I, I got no explanation. Maybe it's uh, some kind of uh, variant of a specific version of a, of a chip. You know, when you go through the data sheet, there are um, some specifications where, that are very standard, such as uh, the one I, I showed you. But, but in fact, there are some, uh, you know, um, some variants of uh, non-flash chips in which the page size may change. So uh, be sure to take uh, the correct data sheet when you are doing this. Um, it may be an error from the documentation itself, you know. Sometimes uh, people writing this documentation, these data sheets may do some errors. Um, but in fact, it's, uh, it's not so common. So, may, so either you got the wrong data sheet, or maybe the f uh, software that uses this, uh, this flash chip May consider that this flash chip has on only a uh, one kilobyte page, uh, one kilobyte page, one kilobyte page size, and and that's it. So um, basically, maybe this uh, this software uh, thinks that this uh, flash chip is only one kilobyte page size, and uh, then it reduces uh, just a part of it to store the data. I don't know. This can be can be both. You know. Uh, yeah. I uh, didn't get it, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Hmm? Yeah. Uh, sorry, uh, <laughs> I don't understand. It's, um, I, I wish uh, maybe we would talk uh, about it later. So to have um, yeah more clear idea about uh, what you are talking about. Yeah. Okay. Anybody? No. Okay. Well, thank you for attending. It's, uh,